quickly. So today uh, I will go ahead and discuss the Maine Coon cat breed and some things that we might see, such as a description and some diseases that we associate with the breed. Let's talk about Maine Coon magic. Um, so basically, just as mentioned, we will discuss general info, such as history, personality, vitals, such as length, weight, and lifespan, uh, and physical traits and colors. And we will also discuss the most common breed associated with diseases, such as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, polycystic kidney disease, and hip dysplasia. Don't forget about the spinal muscular atrophy. It's less common, but it can still be seen. Um, so some history and origin on the cat. It is a New England uh, native, uh, originating from Maine, where they were popular mouse cats uh, and farm cats and even ship cats early in the 18th century. I'm sorry, 1800s, 19th century. They're a natural breed, and little is known of their origin. Um, some people say that Vikings brought them centuries before Columbus did. Um, other people say that they were descendant, uh, descendant cats uh, from Marie Antoinette. Um, they were long-haired. And some other people say that sea captains might have brought long-haired cats, and they might have just breeded with the short-haired domestic cats that we have here. Uh, one thing's for sure though, they are not bred with raccoons. Um, they just have a brown tabby coat that has a furry ring tail, which suggests the Maine Coon name. In fact, Maine Coons back then that did not have the brown tabby coat were called Maine Shags. That was an interesting fact that I found out. Some personality traits that we might see is that they're known for being very affectionate, uh, being very loving to their owner, owners, but um, they're also not as needy as other purebred cats are known to be. Um, they're very good at adapting to their environment. Um, due to that, they don't get stressed very easily. But then again, every cat is unique. Some might, some might not at all. They're known also for being very kid and pet friendly. So if you have children or multiple pets, they might be a good option. And they're also known for having good hunting insects, instincts, as mentioned before, um, for being good mousing cats back in the day. Some vitals that you might also notice uh, is that they live anywhere from 9 to 15 years, a good length of time, weighing anywhere from 9 to 18 pounds, males of course being slightly larger, sometimes more than 20 pounds. They range anywhere from 30 to 40 inches in length, and typically, they don't reach their full size until they're three to five years of age. Did you know that the record holder for the world's longest house cat belongs to this kitty right here named Stewie, who grew over four feet long? Pretty long. Some other physical traits that you might know of is that they're big, rugged cats with a shaggy, smooth coat that looks almost as if they could put in a full day at the farm working and all kinds of weather. They're built for just such work in harsh Maine climate um, where they originate, and the breed standard actually reflects that heritage, um, calling for a medium-sized to large cat uh, with a well-proportioned body that is well-muscled and broad-chested. It, it also has some substantial medium-length legs and large round paws that are well tufted with fur to serve as kind of a little snowshoe during the winter. That's another main coon cat that's pretty big. Some colors that you might see, um, they're pretty commonly seen as being brown tabby in pattern. Um, some people don't even see other color patterns, but they might be surprised to see that they actually come in solid colors as well, such as black, red, or white and all tabby color patterns such as red and white and blue and white. And patterns such as tortoise shell and calico can also be seen. Now let's talk about the most common diseases with our little stressed looking kitty. So hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is one of the most important ones and most common ones that we see. Um, it is also a most common heart disease diagnosed in cats and it is a genetic condition that occurs over time. Um, it is very difficult to diagnose as it usually goes unnoticed um, 
for a while due to often no symptoms being noted until it's been more advanced. Um, and it's also very serious because it can progress or worsen rapidly with or without medication. Um, it can sometimes present as sudden heart failure in young cats, but usually it's seen in adult males. And also it can be genetically tested, which is a good thing for breeders to do. And it can progress, unfortunately, to congenital heart failure, um, which is a, or also a buildup of fluid around the heart and lungs. And also we have a possibility of arterial thromboembolism, which can then lead to paralysis in the hind legs. Some possible symptoms that you might see are le lethargy, uh, labored breathing, coughing, severe weight loss, um, lameness of the rear legs, and a heart murmur. It is best diagnosed with an echocardiogram, um, as it is the only means for really detecting and diagnosing the thickening of the wall. And you can treat it with beta blockers, diuretics, ACE inhibitors, and pretty much those kinds of drugs. Anything that's under that category. Polycystic kidney failure or disease, um, it is a genetic condition and it also occurs over time. Um, it is a condition where multiple cysts grow in the kidneys, usually present at birth, and they can vary in size and number depending on the cat's uh, age. And they are developing cysts, unfortunately, which leads to the kidney enlargement and that leads to the renal failure. Um, even though some cats might have some slower generation, it does not decrease the fatality of this disease. It's still just as fatal. Um, cats suffering usually are asymptomatic. The symptoms usually are evident as an adult or around at seven years. And um, fortunately, it also can be genetically tested, strongly recommended for breeders. Um, some possible symptoms that you might see with this disease are depression, anorexia, weight loss, Increased thirst and urination, occasional vomiting, not always. Diagnosed best with an ultrasound. And treatments include uh, uh, same as chronic kidney failure. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way to slow or remove the cyst. You just medicate and treat with a prescribed diet. Not really a treatment, just more of a therapeutic thing to do. Um, you want a low protein with less phosphorus since a damaged kidney cannot remove phosphorus as well from the blood. And some erythropoietin therapy can also help, but not typically done. Another one is hip dysplasia. It is also a genetic condition, and it can also be genetically tested, which is strongly recommended. It is basically a abnormal hip joint development, and it happens when the hip joint does not fit well into the hip socket. Um, and it eventually becomes damaged due to the constant friction or pressure of these uh, two knocking onto each other the femoral head against the acetabulum socket. Um, it's normally seen uh, as cat ages and it can develop osteoarthritis, uh, which is also a degenerative joint disease. Um, it is, it is not only seen as the cat ages because the size and weight does increase, causing more pressure. Um, some possible signs that you might see upon exam is stiffness when walking, um, not wanting to jump or run, um, and some lameness as well. It's not a fatal disease, but it is very uncomfortable and painful for our cats. And it can be crippling, unfortunately, to a cat that does not receive any treatment or veterinary attention. Some, or I'm sorry, the best diagnosis is with radiographs, and treatment is to put him on a weight management diet that prevents further damage to the hip joint by decreasing pressure. And some exercise, such as leash walks, treadmills, going up and down stairs, things like that. And some proper massage, massages can be taught to you by the vet. Um, and also keeping the cat warm can prevent inducing osteoarthritis, I'm sorry, not osteoarthritis. Um, and you can also give some insects, glucosamine, or vitamin C. Now let's talk about spinal muscular atrophy. It is also another genetic condition, keep in mind all of these are, uh, and it's usually shown on kittens, 
characterized by lameness in the rear legs. It is caused by ongoing loss of the spinal cord neurons. And it is otherwise normal for the cat, not affecting the appetite or use of the litter box. And they can usually live comfortable lives for a couple of years. Um, things you might notice is that they won't run or jump as well as other cats will. And upon exam, you will notice muscle atrophy in the hindquarters and the rear legs. During the exam is when it's best diagnosed, and unfortunately, there are no treatment options for SMAN cats, and there's no cure for the disorder as well. While the treatment must be passed from both parents, sometimes uh, both parents do not show any signs of this disease. In conclusion, Maine Coons are typically healthy cats, but they are susceptible, just like any other purebred, to very nasty diseases that can be serious and even life-threatening. However, with prompt treatment and proper medication and with regular visits to your vet, you can uh, alleviate this discomfort. Remember to monitor your cat's behavior and overall appearance, um, taking them to the regular annual visits, semi-annual visits to your veterinarian for the best and possible life available for your cat, just like these kitties. And that's my references. Thank you.